Welcome to the exercises of the course Foundations of Machine Learning. I'm Niklas Deckers and I will be guiding you through these solution videos. So in the first exercise that I will be producing a video for, um, specification of learning tasks, we are, giving, we are given um, a, a, a scenario for which we are building a machine learning system and um, this scenario consists out of um, six components that you can see here and for these components we are trying to find um, the terms from the lecture uh, that model the relationship between the real world and the model world in order to describe this uh, relationship and specify the learning task. So our, ta our task that we are given here is to predict whether a given mushroom is poisonous or edible. So what you can see um, at the very first glimpse here is that we have to perform a classification task. And in this classification task, um, we are given some objects and we try to assign um, these objects to some classes. And what we are given over here, the set poisonous edible, is this set of classes. So um, yeah, we have this set C with the classes and this is perfectly um, aligned with number E from our task. And we are also given, if we look above here, a pile of mushrooms, and this is our set of objects. These are the real-world objects that we are trying to classify. So this is A. And what's happening now is that we want to train a system that somehow takes objects and um, gives us the class, but we can do it directly because yeah, we cannot shove these mushrooms that we are given into the computer and ex expect it to do something. We have to yeah, first do something with it that involves mathematics. And um, this is exactly what we're doing as a next step here. We are trying to convert each object into um, an object in an abstract feature space. And this feature space is exactly what we are giving, given here, a table with the columns size, weight and color, as well as one row for each possible mushroom and the respective measurements in the cells. And this is our feature space X. So this is B. What does, what does this mean? Well, we, we have a space that consists out of three dimension, size, weight, and color. And we can represent objects in this feature space mathematically. And this allows us to, in a minute, build a system that does this classification. So now what we have to do is we have to define the maps between those uh, spaces here. And the first quite trivial thing that we can do here is we can have a human rate um, our mushrooms, look at them, say, ah, this one is poisonous, this one is edible. I mean, we can even try this out, right? But um, yeah, we need to define this map here from the objects to the classes. And we gave this the name gamma, gamma of O. And as I already said, a human can do this directly. So we take number C here, a human mushroom expert who can tell whether any mushroom you show them is poisonous or edible. So this is C. But still, we don't have an automated system here. And we're trying to do this now, but we're not doing this directly, but rather we're taking this uh, detour via the feature space and then get to the classes. So how do we input an object into the computer or into the feature space. Well, we need another map here and we call this map alpha of an object. And um, yeah, what does this mean, putting the object into the feature space? Well, we need to somehow get the size, weight and color in this case for um, a given mushroom. And this can be done either by a human um, who 
who measures stuff, or a device that measures the size, weight, and color of a mushroom. This can be done by a device, and this is exactly what we have with D here. Okay, so now we see our objects in the feature space, and now we somehow need to get the classes out of it. And this is actually the system we are trying to build. We have given objects in the feature space, so we have uh, values for size, weight, and color. And the machine learning system that we are trying to build is then able, or should then be able, to derive the classes from this. So this is exactly what we have here as f. And uh, yeah, we gave this a name in the lecture, and this is y of x. And um, yeah, there we have it. There we have our full diagram of the relationship between real world and model world.